Okay, so uh, this video is about area under the curve. Uh, you should remember area under the curve from last year. Uh, in particular, I'm going to tell you about something called the trapezoidal rule, which you probably haven't seen before. Now, uh, this is really a, just an explanatory video. You're not really going to do a lot of maths here, so you can sort of settle back and, and watch. Uh, make sure you take a few notes, but um, for the most part, you just need to understand what I'm telling you. Now, you'll remember from last year that area under the curve, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you might have a, a function that looks something like that, let's say. And uh, let's give that a value 2 and this a value, I don't know, 6. And finding the area under the curve just meant finding this area. The area between the x-axis and the function between two values, might be 2 and 6, might be 1 and 7, might be negative 5 and whatever. Finding that total area under the curve. Uh, and you might have done that using integration last year. I'm going to do uh, something that allows you to approximate the area under the curve. It doesn't give you an exact value, it approximates it. Alright, let's take a look. Oh, first of all, it's called the trapezoidal rule. So I'm going to use GeoGebra to show you how this works. I'll just get rid of that first of all. So here's our function. You can see it passes through the origin, it comes up, and it comes back down again. Now I'm going to find the area under the curve. Um, I'm going to do it between 1 and 7. And I'm going to use uh, trapeziums in order to calculate this area under the curve. Uh, by that, I'll show you what I mean. This is a very, very crude approximation of the area under the curve. You can see that it's approximating that the area under the curve is 387. And it's approximating it by drawing two trapeziums. Now, you might not see that as a trapezium, but take a close look at it. It's four sides, one on an angle. Now, if I just, I'll just go over here and draw it. That trapezium looks like this, uh, just on its side, okay? So imagine this turned 90 degrees. That's still a trapezium. It's called a right angle trapezium. So I've created a trapezium. You can see my right angle trapezium here. Now I've actually got two trapeziums here. So it goes from one to four, and then from four to seven. Now you can see that this is a pretty bad approximation of the area under the curve because there's all of this space here and all of this space here. It's an underestimation of the area under the curve. We know that the area under the curve is larger than 387, but we can probably guess that 387 is an okay estimate. Now if I increase my number of trapeziums, I'm going to increase it to, I don't know, 4. You can see that we get a much better approximation under the curve. So it's going from 1 to 2.5, 2.5 to 4, 4 to 5.5, and 5.5 to 7. Uh, now this area under the curve is an approximation. This time we're approximating it at 434.25. It's a better approximation. You can see that the uh, small bits of white under the, under the lines here, it's a lot better than it was before. Uh, it's still not the best approximation we can come up with. Now you can see between, remember I'm starting from 1 and ending at 7. Now it seems to make sense to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 trapeziums. Now if I do 6 trapeziums it really makes a lot of sense because I've got each trapezium has a width of 1, 2, 3, each trapezium has a width of 1. Okay, uh, and you can see my approximations getting better and better all the time. Remember, my approximation started here at 387, and we now have an approximation at 443. Um, now, the area of each trapezium you could find. Uh, you should remember your formula for the area of a trapezium. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it in the next video. But if you can find the area of this trapezium and the area of this trapezium and this one and this one and this one and this one, and you add them all together, you're finding a pretty good area under the curve here. Now, obviously, the more trapeziums I use, the better my estimation gets. Uh, you can see I'm using 12 trapeziums here, so I'm going every 0.5 for my trapeziums. Uh, 
uh, and that area under the curve is 448.25 and we can go all the way up here um, maybe 18 is a good one 449.22 we're converging on whatever the actual area under the curve is you can see there's only very very small errors now occurring okay um, now that's the that's the basic idea behind what the trapezoidal rule is. Remember, it's used only to approximate areas under the curve. It doesn't give you the exact area under the curve. It gives you an approximate. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at uh, some a way in which we can use this trapezoidal rule.